Hey everyone, my name is Drew and we are here. This is going to be week number five of the UBL and we are up against Choi CJ and we've been uh, battling him quite a few times uh, as of recently, but here we're up against each other with some pretty brand new teams. So we both made uh, a few transactions here. Uh, so first and foremost, I dropped my Keldeo for the Azumarill, which I felt would be super important in this matchup. And also we both had, um, we're, we're both doing this battle a little bit earlier than we normally would. But we both just kind of agreed that like, hey, we're both just gonna try to like have our transactions go through and we're just both gonna do like short weeks basically of team prep. But as long as we're both like on the same page, then we're just gonna both run with it. So he had to build around my team with a new Azumarill and I'm building around his team with a new Snorlax. And I believe the Seismitoad is new as well. And he um, dropped a few mons to get that. But other than that, he just has some pretty scary options with the Gengar, the Mew, uh, which is behind my head, I believe, but uh, the Snorlax as well. And um, the Gengar is also really scary, but I'm actually going to be uh, watching this match with somebody else here as well. So here we have Josh, aka Inverted Color. Oh, oh, hey YouTube, what's really good? I'm a, a massive Route 8100 fan. I've always wanted to be on the channel, reacting to battles with him. So here we are. <laughs> Oh, I love this. Yeah, no, so so I had to bring somebody on to watch this match with me, and I really also wanted to bring on Randy as well to kind of just react to this match, and you've not seen the, the, this match before. Randy has. So, okay, here's the thing. This match honestly might have just been, like, the least fun I've ever had playing Pokemon. Like, <laughs> like I would hesitate to even really, like, call this Pokemon, right? Um, I'm pretty positive that we just, like, both play Digimon this entire match and honestly like I used to play VGC where uh you used to have to like drive out of your way to go be bad at Pokemon and uh I'm pretty positive now you get to do it from your own home yeah no this <laughs> this like I I was able to do from the convenience of my own home and this was just pretty aggressively like not fun honestly like I, I, don't, I don't even think CJ lives too too far away from me I think we're both on the east coast I honestly would have driven to his home if it meant we would have been able to play a real Pokemon match at him but I'm fairly certain we just ended up playing Digimon this entire match I'm not too too sure I guess we'll just watch this match together uh but if you're ready I think I just want to get into this match yeah, I'm I'm ready. I just have one I have one comment or addition before this. Yeah. Uh Digimon is 100% a skill game and we can move on from there. <laughs> uh I will take your word for it. I'm sure Okay, good. I'm sure it's as much a skill game as Magic the Gathering is. But with that, we're <laughs> going to go on and play. So, uh um again, I would have honestly forgotten our lead matchups, but once again, uh Harrowhor told me that um, when you're in team preview, the, the first slot is going to be your leads. So I lead off with my Necrozma, and he leads off with his Ferrothorn. And um, my Necrozma is a pretty standard um, set of Necrozma, right? So it, it's uh, just Sub, Calm Mind, Heat Wave, and Photon Geyser. And I thought it would be able to reasonably deal with most of his team. And I just go for the Sub Turn 1 because I thought this would be, be able to give me reasonably free uh, setup in this early matchup here. As he just goes for the spikes, I thought he would want to go for a spikes, maybe a thunder wave, maybe a toxic. So I thought the sub would be free, and this would give me a free calm mind. And as he does switch out, it will give me a free calm mind. Um, as he goes into the Snorlax here, and uh, at this point, I'm I'm not the most worried about Snorlax because I'm thinking that I'll be able to calm mind up high enough where at least I'm doing a reasonable am amount of damage, no matter what kind of set this Snorlax can be and regardless even if i don't do like any damage to, to the snorlax i'll be able to gauge some damage and i can give up my my sub to a facade and then i'll be able to switch out and kind of reassess from there but regardless i'll um i'll, I'll be able to leave this interaction with enough um with enough hp to just be able to manage this team he goes for the whirlwind. What is whirlwind? Yeah, he, go <laughs> he goes for whirlwind so the the first move that i get to see from the snorlax is whirlwind uh, which completely negates pretty much everything that I was doing, but I didn't know Snorlax got Whirlwind. <laughs> but uh, this is gonna allow me to go into my well. It, it forces out my Raikou, right? And I get a Thunderbolt Para, which uh, is pretty not ideal because I I, I do have two Pokemon with Toxic to kind of deal with this specifically. Um, and he goes for the Toxic himself, so this uh, already reveals. Uh, Whirlwind and Toxic as his first two moves, and the fact that he, and the fact that he has a Berry means that he probably has Recycle as well, which would leave one slot left for an attacking move, which I'm not too sure what it's going to be, but um, this is going to put me in a pretty awkward position. But I, 
I, I've already been able to kind of suss out his moveset pretty early on, which means that I'm pretty positive my Registeel kind of hard walls this thing. So, uh, I, I, I do get a full para, and again, my Registeel is going to be able to outspeed it naturally and with a para especially. It's going to let me get rocks up as well, and uh, normally I would be able to Toxic the Snorlax, but again, I did get the very unfortunate Thunderbolt para, and he's going to be able to recycle a little bit. And uh, from here, I'm going to attempt to, to kind of wear this thing down with some seismic tosses. And uh, don't get me wrong, I have a lot of seismic toss PP. I think it maxes out at like 32. So I will be able to, to like stay in here for a while. But uh, at the same time, Snorlax has a monster HP stat, right? I think it like... Oh my god. Uh, I, I think uninvested, Snorlax's HP is like 267 or maybe that's full HP investment. But it's a monster HP stat. And, yeah, uh, like the seismic toss looks like a 10 hit KO or something. Yeah, right. Because I'm only able to do like 50 HP. But my honest thinking was that, like, it, from to my eye, and like in this live in, in this live match, I did have uh, the HP bar, so I was able to gauge it a little bit. But my goal here was to um, work this Snorlax so that I can leave the through seismic toss. I can leave this Snorlax just above 50 percent and be able to. Uh, try to hit it with a big photon guys or a big move later on in the match but here i was trying to get it to at least burn his berry first and foremost um to see if i can get anything going but it ends up whirlwinding me out and uh he brings me out to my knee lego here and uh if i'm not mistaken i think my knee lego might have been speed boosting this matchup and it's not and it's just <laughs> and it's just not even like that strong oh because he had a mega aerodactyl on his team he, he didn't bring it to okay. the matchup but he had a mega aerodactyl and i thought speed boosting the lego would be super strong in this matchup so it's like life word but it but it's still not hitting as hard as it can obviously um and and my knee lego is one of my z move users but i didn't even have z move on this set so like who knows what I'm going to be able to do. I do end up being able to get Toxic Spice because in my head, I thought I was going to be able to like not have to deal with the Snorlax at some point in this match, but uh, that's debatable. Anyway, <laughs> uh, um, I am able to, to like try to gauge some damage off with Power Gem. And again, I'm, I, I'm, in, I'm in a no man's lane because I'm doing a little bit too much where... Um, where I can't hit it again without it getting its berry again. And I can't really... But I also just need to get some damage off and at least get it to like right. burn some recycles at some point or like get it to eat its berry. Um, some other thoughts. How much PP does recycle have? Uh, recycle maxes out at sixteen. Fun fact. Okay. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so, and and I don't think it's yet in this like when I was battling this live, but uh, I do start to think about how how many like recycles I I am trying to make this thing use, and I have to think about that like quite a bit right now. And. Uh, like I said, I'm just trying to seismic toss this, trying to get this in, into that magic, like, 51% mark, where I can start to try to make something happen here. And maybe if I get, like, lucky w w with a full para, and I can, like, get to plus one photon geyser and crit, I don't know, maybe I can get somewhere in life. But, uh, ultimately, it's it's looking like, um, stalling this thing out of recycles is going to be my best bet in this matchup here. And, uh... This is just gonna go on for like quite a bit. I just don't even know what to say. Okay, so also I I, I should mention that my Azumarill, um, was a max defense Sap Zipper Azumarill, <laughs> um, uh, to 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 try to take on things like um he had a he had a Blaziken he had a Z move Blaziken he had a Mega Aerodactyl which I didn't have the best answers to, um uh, and this thing I wanted to be able to toxic the Snorlax. Which I never get a chance right. to actually talk to the Snorlax. So here he switches out, and I'm thinking, "Whoa, mind blown!" All right, so now th things are starting to happen, right? Uh, Mew, Mew comes in, and uh, the, Mew, the the Mew gets toxic through toxic spikes, and now I get to see not. So first of all, I, I start to try to gauge seismic toxic seismic toss damage to see how uh, HP invested this thing is, because obviously seismic toss is going to be 50 HP every darn turn, and uh, I also get to see what this Mew set is, and it's um and it has uh poison on it so i'm feeling okay about this but then he reveals roost which are which um, um, immediately makes me uh concerned because this thing like yes it's a different pokemon that's out here in the world but it's also uh not toxic and uh can also just kind of roost all me in indefinitely so i'm thinking right now that maybe his plan is to stall me out of seismic tosses and uh it's never look, gonna look great for me ever but i'm gonna try to like stay in here and gauge out more of his moveset i, I want to at least like find out what this thing's trying to do to me um oh also <laughs> this is also when i'm starting to think oh wait if he if he's gonna have this mew in instead then maybe i can set up on this before the snorlax comes in and if i get to plus two before the snorlax comes in then i can start to to, to hit the snorlax with some fat photon geysers right 
and uh, this thing is super fang, which is which is immediately really scary. I'm trying to wear this thing down over time as much as possible, but this thing is also taunt, right? So, <laughs> so, 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 so far we've seen taunt, super fang, and roost. Another set that kind of gets hard walled by by a Reggie Steel as long as I can uh, get a Toxic off on it or, or I have like any type of poison damage off on it. Um, it really doesn't do much of anything. I'm also assuming that, that, that the final move is like maybe Psychic or or um, is either Psychic or or a uh, U-turn. But now now that I've seen more of the moveset, now I'm thinking, oh, maybe I can go into Spirit Tomb because I'm going to be immune to the Psychic and I'm going to be immune to the Super Fang. So maybe if this thing gets a Calm Mind up, if this thing can get multiple Calm Minds up, then I can start to do some damage to the Snorlax, right? Um, but now he, this is where he knows what I'm trying to do and he goes back into the Snorlax to prevent any type of Calm Minding that I can ever do in the situation. Um, I think at first I, I try to do some damage off with Dark Pulse just to try to like gauge damage and see, what I, and see, and see whatever I can do. But now... Um, he has to fear that I'm a potential calm mind or or some sort of a potential s set up spirit tomb, which I am. And I know he's going to try to toxic me as well with this dang um, Snorlax. So I have to dodge the, the toxic by going into my Registeel. And uh, I'm not in a position where I can set up anymore at all. So I have to figure out something else that I can do. And um, I try to protect because now I'm starting to now I'm starting to be more cognizant of the fact that I can potentially stall this thing out of um out of recycles and in my mind i'm counting like five or so re recycles that i've that i've used so far but also no idea that whirlwind went through protect that was a new thing that i learned uh on this day but I, yeah uh, I at this point at, at this point i just decided to forfeit and give <laughs> cj the 6-0 win give all six ko's to the snorlax um and we were talking after the match um, right we we're talking after yeah. the match right and uh, we were talking about the fact that I could have tried to stall this thing out of recycles. And he had told me that um, I counted wrong. I counted about five recycles. He, he told me that he, ha he had had to use about seven recycles. So I could have... I was I was like almost halfway there. I just needed like nine more recycles. I could have I, I gotten there in the end. But in my memory, there was like 40 to 45 minutes left on the timer. And uh, this was not how I wanted to spend a day of uh, my life. So... <laughs> I just decided that forfeiting would have been the best play for me to go for after I saw these sets. It would have been a long slog to take out the Mew, and it would have been a long slog to try to uh, deal with the Snorlax, especially when uh, he could pivot around so aggressively. And uh, that's going to be week five. That's going to be the match. So uh, that will bring us down from 3-1 to 3-2. And uh, that, that minus six that we're going to take from this match is not going to help our differential even a little bit. But... Uh, that's gonna be our week five. Let's. Do we have any reactions uh, from? That's <laughs> in vivid color. <laughs> oh man. Okay. So, I mean, my first inclination was like, once he switched into the Snorlax and the Spirit Tomb, I was like, you're just gonna like Dark Pulse and try to like para flinch it out of the game, right? That's what I would have tried to have done. But this, like, these sets are atrocious to play against. I mean, no, like, no shade to CJ even a little bit. It's just like. The team he brought versus the team he brought, this was never going to be fun. <laughs> like, it wasn't going to be a fun game. Oh. It was either, like, you were going to set up and then, I guess, just, like, put him out of his misery really early, or he was going to keep you miserable for 55 <laughs> minutes. Yeah, no, so don't get me wrong. Like, like, Paraflinch did cross my mind, but um, at the same time... He only has to break through once to be able to, to recycle and cause me to go through the, the entire cycle all over again. Right. And and if he broke through, he would have he would have had all all he would have had to do was break through and go for toxic once, and then break through and go for recycle, and then he o almost always wins that one v one interaction. Oh yeah, hundred percent. And basically, my my only out to that would would have had to have been to consistently like like dark pulse into uh. In, in, into para for maybe like five six straight turns maybe i don't I, I, I don't even know but um something like that but yeah what i did find out through through just attacking this thing as, as much as i did was that it wasn't particularly especially defensive so i would have been curious to see how much damage um uh i, I was doing to that thing consistently but it would have never been worth it because um if i ever tried to set up a calm mind and try to uh, aggressively pair flinch he could have whirlwinded me he could if he if he ever broke through and landed a toxic then he always wins that 1v1 and uh right. it was never going to be fun no matter what i did so uh no I, 
I mean, I think the only the only thing that would have maybe changed the math a little bit is if on the Mew switch you Calm Mind there, and then you get a little bit extra damage off, and maybe it turns your five hit KO into a three hit KO, and you only have to pair or flinch him three times. But you're just playing like you're just rolling dice at this point. Like this entire game, at once the Snorlax was paralyzed, was just rolling dice to see like how many turns it could be fully paired in a row. Yeah, and and I was honestly really happy with with the azumarill set that i that i brought with me right so so again it was it was max defense it was it was never going to be touched by the ferrothorn um the gengar could, could, could obviously sludge wave it but it kind of walls the sneasel um right uh it, it can get a toxic off on the seismitoad uh the mew i mean who knows with the mew i mean who knows <laughs> but but i could have i i, I could have either toxic or hard walled a lot of his team but um, again, it was it was pretty much a, a game time decision. I I, I packed um, liquidation, play rough, uh, superpower, because I, I I needed superpower in particular for the Ferrothorn, and uh, it was game time decision. I dropped knockoff at the last second for toxic, thinking that that would be to play. But if I was ever able to uh, knock off the berry, then that would have changed a whole heck of a lot. But at the same time, being able to right. being able to toxic the Snorlax was well a lot more. Um, appealing to me, especially again when the Registeel just kind of hard walled it. But um, this right, is kind of just yeah, yeah. this is just kind of where where the entire match was left. I mean, yeah, the ten percent para ch like uh, from the T bolt was astronomically bad for you, especially when you have so many. I mean, like, he's not like rest, you know, he's not like rest sleep talk. He was just like what facade facade recycle whirlwind toxic. That was his set, correct? Yeah, so I mean, Toxic just like makes it to where he has to start switching it out to like even preserve its health. Right. There's just a series of unfortunate events. <laughs> oh man, I'm sorry you had to play this. <laughs> that's that's my biggest takeaway. Just apologies. Yeah, no, and like I'm not gonna pretend like I put hours and hours of thought into these sets, but I was pretty happy with overall the way that I built these sets and the way that I felt like my team interacted against his, and then. And then just being put in a position where I'm not even like really able to play, it just right. uh, was pretty unfortunate. But uh, I guess that's that's Pokemon, and that's our week five match. That's yeah, it's the it's the game we play. It's an unfortunate week five, but I have faith that you'll pull it back together and bring some heat sets uh, in the next week. So what what league is this? The ICB? Is that what you said? <laughs> <laughs> this is the UBL week five, and there we go. And, but yeah, like I said, this will drop us down to, to three and two, and we, we definitely can bounce back. But uh, it was just a really um, awkward interaction to, to have to happen. But um, I will say a, a few things. First of all, I, I do genuinely feel like my team gets a whole heck of a lot better with the Azumarill over the Keldeo, and it was a straight points trade, right? So I I didn't have to lose any points. I didn't gain any points. Um, but I do think it just fits my team a whole lot better, and I think it, it, um, it will make my team a whole lot stronger in the, in the weeks moving forward. And um, CJ had to go on vacation, so this match had to be played a whole lot earlier than it would have norm normally been played. I think I played this match like the day... Oh no, I played this match the day before my week four match. So uh, I'm going to have a nice cushion of time in, in between uh, this and my week six match in order to try to regroup, try to, you know figure out how the heck I'm going to build my next matchup and uh, try to, you know, play better for head next time. So, uh, very good. That is going to be uh, it for me. In Pivot Color, um, <laughs> what, uh, talk about the types of projects that you've been working on. Uh, I'm, I'm in the WBE currently and I'm streaming a lot of games that Root tells me are trash consistently. On, on Twitch, it, once every three weeks, I stream. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not doing too much. I may, I'm also trying to make uh, sort of like these animated motion graphic things that different... I mean, right now, it's just like Pokemon-related stuff so that content creators in this space can use it for free. Um, but yeah, that's that's me. I start teaching again in about a month. I'm not looking forward to that. Oh, man, that is remarkably... That is very unfair to the students. How how close to that is that is? Oh my god, <laughs> that was aggressive. <laughs> but but regardless, that, that's gonna be it for us. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really really yeah. soon with our week six match. We will have uh more more weeks of the ICBA. We'll, we're gonna be be continuing a league war that is ongoing as well as a few other uh, projects coming up really really soon. But once again, with that, thank you guys so much for watching. Gotta be with you guys out. And thanks for having me.